If like me, you probably have a main character in the Suicide Squad and once you reach the end of the main campaign, it's likely that you'll have that main character up to the mid to late 20s level wise, which is going to pretty much open you up to all of your skill tree talents and unlock the true potential of that character's ability in combat. However, your other characters are probably lagging behind significantly, especially if you've only used them for certain missions during the campaign, where they are pumped up and get bonus XP and rewards from it. So I just wanted to go through a quick rundown of what is currently the fastest and most efficient power leveling farm in Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, which you can use for your other characters, how to do it no matter your skill level, and how to maximise its potential. Now most missions in the game on the minimap come with various rewards from certain amounts of XP which vary or ones that unlock certain abilities through the support squad or even ones that allow you to farm Prometheum to allow you to gain access to the end game and farm the finite crisis events for the Bane infamy sets and other notorious and infamous gear. Now obviously to level up your characters you're going to need to focus on XP and a lot of these do only offer about 3000 XP and some of them do offer up to about 13 and 17000 but once you reach the end game and the end of the campaign there's a few missions that you want to pay attention to and complete these with your lowest level characters. Now the main ones that open up after the end of the campaign are world events now there's only a few of these that do actually open up but they offer about 70,000 XP so it's well worth doing these on some of your lower level characters to help boost up the level in the skill tree and unlock some of the talents which are ultimately going to be crucial as they fight alongside you are definitely going to benefit you in the long run. However, the main one that you want to focus on once you do get to the end of the campaign is the support squad questline from Gizmo. Now Gizmo has three missions and you do the first one during the campaign and the second one is unlocked as you progress through it, but it's the third mission in this questline that you want to pay attention to. Now to be honest you probably don't need to focus on vehicle combat at this stage as your builds and combos are definitely going to do all of the heavy lifting, but this mission called Hard Body Squad is as essentially an infinite enemy spawn which you can farm indefinitely till your heart's content. It's great for farming both XP and even loot and can definitely help to round out any gaps in your builds. Now to complete this mission there's only two rounds and to do it efficiently you're meant to collect data from killing enemies and bank it at the truck and to be honest I would recommend completing the first round of this mission because it's the second round which has way more enemies that spawn in more often and because XP counts per enemy defeated you can physically see on the screen just how much XP you're getting. Now the main thing with this farm is that you don't want to complete the mission so essentially as long as you don't go anywhere near the truck and turn in the data that you've collected you can effectively just farm all the enemies that spawn in, use the vehicles that Gizmo spawns into your heart's content. Now to be honest doing this I've managed to level up some of my characters pretty quickly doing this and even on the basic difficulty levels you're going to get one two maybe three levels every couple of minutes doing this but the main thing is is that like I say you don't want to complete it so if you want to focus on another character all you want to do is go back into your menu select abort mission and abort the mission. Now once you abort it you'll be granted the XP that you farmed and be able to level up your talent tree on whichever character you've been using. This is great because now that you've aborted you can swap characters and go again as much as you want as long as you never complete the second round of objectives. Now to maximise this farm make sure you keep an eye on any gear that has XP bonuses and equip them on your characters but mainly you'll want to adjust your difficulty setting. This is because it'll grant bonus XP based on the level that you've selected and if you've started to unlock the incursion levels this will increase the XP bonus offered even further. Even on just sweating bullets difficulty you'll get 2-3 to three levels every few minutes doing this and it's going to be a way quicker method to level up your other characters so that they'll be more effective in combat alongside you especially as you edge into the end game to farm better gear and mastery level ranks. Now that you've leveled up and farmed to your heart's content make sure you have these 8 settings turned off. Number 6 might surprise you. 